Hey everyone, welcome to the 11th part of our Java game development tutorial series. Um, today we are going to uh, work some more on our player class. So let's jump right into that. Uh, in our update method, what we're going to do is I'm going to create um, a quick variable, float move x equals 0. Okay, at the end of the function we're going to say pose x plus equals move x times delta time. Now what this is, is our position is going to be incremented by the number of pixels that is the our move x variable, which is going to be our movement left and right, um, times delta time will make it be pixels per second. So if move x is 100, we'll move 100 pixels per second, because each frame, we're going to take the delta time, multiply our move speed and all that. It's uh, what gives our game frame rate independence. Um, so, move x, we need to set that. We're going to say if input.getKey, key event dot vk left, then move x minus equals run speed. Now, if you remember, um, run speed is a variable in the mob uh, class, and since player extends mob, player has access to this variable too. And we're going to create another one. If input dot get key, uh, blah blah blah, vk right, then move x plus equals run speed. So move the other direction. So, oops, this has the effect of canceling uh, out left and right if they're both being pressed at the same time. So if you were to run this right now, you'd be able to move left when you press left, right when you press right, and if you press both, you move nowhere. See, if I press both at the same time, we can't, we don't go anywhere, which is what we want to have happen. Um, let's increase our run speed uh, in in our constructor. Basically, whenever since our mob class is going to handle all mobs, right now our run speed is at fifty. But if we want the player to have a run speed of 100, we, need, we should set that in his constructor. Run speed equals 100. There we go. Now we can move twice as fast as we did before. Now I'm going to create um, an, a variable, global variable for player. Private float velocity x. Uh, sorry, y. Why are we doing velocity y but not x? Uh... Well, because we need to handle gravity, and gravity accumulates. Unlike running, where you press a left key and you just run in that direction, uh, you want to be able to accelerate uh, on the vertical axis because of gravity. You know, you jump, you slowly decelerate as you reach the apex of the jump, and then you start to accelerate in the other direction. You know, we need a variable to handle what, what our current velocity is so we can add to it, and that's acceleration. Um, so I'm going to create private float velocity y and private float gravity equals, I'm going to say, I don't really know what it should be, so I'm just going to say 50. And what we're going to do is, right here before we reach the uh, end, we're going to say velocity y minus equals gravity times delta time. I'm pretty sure that's correct uh, because we want to because gravity is measured in units per second per second because uh, you know gravity is going to make us accelerate by this number of pixels per second every second so after you know at, at, at time zero we'll be moving zero pixels per second downwards at one second we'll be moving 50 pixels per second at two seconds will be moving a hundred pixels per second. You see where I'm going with this? That's what why we need to multiply by delta time to make it, you know, we're dependent on seconds. Um, otherwise we'd fall very, very, very quickly because it would add gravity to it every frame and, you know, after one second we've already elapsed 200 frames given our current setup. Um, you can see why that'd be a problem. Uh, so anyway, at the end, after we did pose x, we're going to say pose y plus equals uh, velocity y um, times delta time. That's correct, I think. So if we were to play this, what happens? Whoops. <laughs> you can see we're flying upwards. 
that's because um i keep forgetting i i sometimes have trouble remembering this too uh our movement up and down is measured um you know negative makes us go up positive makes us go down so that should be positive and as you can see we fall kind of slowly though so that's why we want to increase gravity i'd say set it for 200 let's see what happens then that looks okay um we're gonna need something to run into uh if we're gonna be able to you know stay up so i'm gonna go ahead and create a simple platform class you know you get a bonus here uh two things in one uh we'll put it in object i'm gonna call this platform i'm gonna say that it extends sprite add the constructor It probably shouldn't extend sprite, but for right now it will. I mean, sprite has update methods that may not... Well, actually, you know, moving platforms might need to have an update method, so... This is actually okay, I think. Let's see what we've got here. Um, like platform. Let's just create... Um, wait, sprite it's already have width and height, don't they? Well, let's override the render method. Public void render... Graphics g g dot set color color dot let's change this one to green and our player will be blue because uh, I like the color green you know for the ground it makes sense set color color dot green g dot uh, draw rect remember right it was an integer that is pose x minus width divided by two integer that is pose y minus height divided by 2 uh, width and height and we have failure y and then oh, oops integer that is width and an integer that is height okay um, so that's how our platforms are going to be handled. Let's say this basic platform will say width equals uh, 300. Height equals 20. Okay. And now in our game class, world dot current world, same as we did with the player, dot sprites dot add new platform. Let's set its position to be uh, 200, 200. See where that puts it. I don't really know where that is. Import our platform of class, of course. And semicolon. Um, now, this will make the platform appear there, but it won't interact with us yet because we haven't told it to. Hey, that looks pretty good. Um, our player, uh, like I said, I want to change his color to blue. Now let's see, I don't know how long this episode's been going for. I don't want it to be too long, but I want to make it where we can... I want to demonstrate the basics of the collision with the platform. Um, so here's what I like to do. Um, we're going to say for... Okay, I think the best way to do this is we say for... Um, sprite sprite colon which means in you know this is a how this is one way to do a for loop and just for those of you who don't know you you declare um and when you when you have a list of objects and you want to go through them you say you know the type of object you know for the type of object called uh this so for the sprite well which we refer to as sprite in and then we have to give it the list the list is going to be um world dot current world dot sprites so for every sprite in the in this list we will refer to it as sprite and execute this loop um, as many times as it takes uh, what we want to do is we want to compare our um, colliding rectangle with the colliding rectangle of this other sprite now this is um, is not the best way to do this. Oftentimes, uh, the way they go about doing this kind of collision is splitting the screen up into sections and all that. For the sake of our tutorial, we're not going to be too complicated. 
um, this should be sufficient. Um, for let's see, what we need to do is we need to get our rect. Actually, we can we can get our rect first because, you know, just like this, we're gonna say rectangle my rect equals new rectangle. And now the rectangle, unless I'm mistaken, works much like uh, the draw rect right here. We need to give it the upper left hand corner and the width and height. So the way we're going to do that is, well, actually, I'm just going to grab this and use it because that's exactly what we need. I'm going to import rectangle. I'm going to put a little comment here. Do collisions and collisions. This way I know what, what this block is for because it get, gets a little messy after a while if you're not careful. Um, so now we're going to say rectangle other rect equals new rectangle. Now it's going to need to take all of what we put there except it's going to be sprite.posex minus sprite.width. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to split the split the line um, because it's going to get long pretty quickly. Sprite.pose y, sprite.height, sprite.width, sprite.height. Okay, so now it's the same th the same as this, except the sprite's rectangle instead of uh, ours. Um, so then what we do is basically, what we, what we want to do is we want to see if moving in our current direction will cause us to collide. And if so, we don't want to move in that direction. That's one way to handle collisions. There's many different ways. Collision detection is an extensive topic. I found that the easiest way for, for me to do it is rather than waiting for the collision to happen and then resolve it, uh, simply check to see if we would collide if we were moving in our current position, in our current direction. We can safely assume then that we are colliding because we are moving in that direction. Um, but stop the collision before it becomes a problem. Uh, I'm going to do a very rough and simple version of that um, for you. Here's what we're going to do. We say, uh, right here where we did my rect, instead what we actually want to do is pose x plus um, move x move x times delta time, as far as I know. Um, the reason why we want to do that is we want to basically say if we were, if we had moved it where we're planning on moving, this is where our position is going to be. Same thing with pose y. Uh, with pose y, we need to say plus velocity y times delta time. I'm going to split the line right here, make it cleaner. Um, so that's what we do there. And now we say if my rect, which isn't really our current rect, but our future rect if we were to move where we're planning on moving. If my rect dot intersects other rect, that's how we measure, how we detect a collision if the two rectangles intersect. If my rect dot intersects other rect, um, then we can say move x minus equals move x and uh, velocity y minus equals velocity y. This is not the way to do it. The reason is we don't know if we're colliding horizontally or vertically. We're just assuming we're colliding on both. That's not a good way to do it. I'm, the reason I did it that way is because I'm running low on time for this and we'll do more advanced collision detection in our next episode, but I wanted you to see how it works um, with the ground. And okay, <laughs> very silly problem uh, right here. When we loop through the sprites, with it, we see the thing is right here we're not moving. Why? Because it thinks we're colliding. What are we colliding with? The only thing we can colli be colliding with is ourselves. Uh, a common uh, problem that I uh, will occasionally encounter because I forget to get rid of it is we need to check at the beginning of our for loop. We need to say if sprite is equal to this continue, which means skip this iteration of the loop and continue the next one because we're going through our list of sprites. We encountered ourselves and you see that's a problem. So let's test that out. Collision detection is successful. So if you like this episode, please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.